What's up guys, this is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play campaign as Great Britain. So to round off where we left off last time, uh, I have established a secure foothold in Eastern Europe, which we are going to uh, fortify and build. But our main expansionist efforts are going to be around Northern uh, North America. So we have this force under John Churchill marching towards the Huron Confederacy and we also have a small force that's landed up here near York Factory to capture the forces based up here. However, there's not much we can do at the moment so we're probably going to hit end turn because we have no money and we have no battles to fight so we can only do what we can do. But yes, the current strategy of securing Canada and improving fur pelt production towards our trade empire is a good decision, as well as uh, growing our uh, naval forces to try and gain some dominance in the trade zones. Because it's never really something I do from... Off the bat, I don't really focus on the trade zones, but with Britain, you do get a bit of freedom to, to do some stuff like that. You demand a military access indefinite and they offer carbines. You have no reason for me to get through the territory. But I don't want carbines. I don't want carbines, but I don't want... I suppose I... Carbines isn't enough, but I don't want them to have indefinite military access, I suppose, is my biggest thing there. The, Mar the Marathas are growing in India. Which will be different at least, right? <laughs> we, won't, we won't always be fighting against the... against the, um... the Mughal Empire. New Spain has done a number on the pirates. I don't like how they're running in the trade theatre. That's probably not good. That sounds like someone has attacked them. So who's got Naroon? Someone's bought Naroon from the Mughal Empire. Barbary states can't attack me near my ports anymore. Ah, the pirates are here. A better a better captain would probably win that engagement, but I would not. Okay, so that's one war galleon knocked out, but it does kind of highlight the need to make sure you do keep strong naval forces. Hey, the pirates actually died to the new Spaniard ship. Okay, let's pick up. Okay, so we're getting some fifth rates. Probably a good option, actually, for quickly expanding the fleet. New town emerges, Fort Rupert. Okay, let's get a craft workshop and then let's get a trade port. Let's get some furs to market. And this force is still replenishing as it marches towards the enemy. This region is now completely proselytized, so let's get my priest up here. This force that still needs... itself still needs to reinforce. Um, hold on to the territory for a minute. We can take... let's spend some time degrading their responses. Or degrading their... Uh, degrading their um, ability to attack us. Again, we're going to get some extra ships next turn. So you, 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 to be honest, probably don't necessarily need to be here, unless, you, unless is that where we build up? Where, is that where we're going to build up our uh, home fleet? So we've got some line infantry recruited in Scotland. Let's march them down. To Oxford. Let's check our tech. Physiocracy is a good
good decision as is socket bayonet for Cambridge or ring bayonet. I think that's everything. Can we get trade with anyone new? Denmark? Nope. Louisiana won't let us. Persia would be a good one to trade with, but they won't don't want to. Venice? You can have plug bay in it. I want that sweet sweet trade income. So we're at 9,600. Okay, let's hit end turn. Taking cover. My spy marches over towards Vilnius. Mm, the Austrians might actually go and capture Warsaw. That would be an interesting set of circumstances. Ooh, no, I'm not giving you seasoning and square formation for only 800. No, 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 no. Sweden wants an alliance. Who are you at war with? Denmark, Russia. Although, I'm, that won't bring me into war with people. I'm not trading with Denmark. I have no relations with Denmark. I have no relations with Russia. Probably not terrible. It likely won't affect our alliances. Let's. So I will get a diplomatic penalty um, against or with Denmark and with the Russian Empire, but I think that's a that's a fair result, I think. The Huron have not attacked us, and that's good, because then that means we will get some uh, attrition on them over time. Oh, no way. <laughs> we had not had the Huron's turn yet, and we're being sallied at York Factory. So let's take them out. So York Factory is quite a... It's difficult for that region to grow quickly because they are. You know, it's just a very. It, it, it just takes a while for them to to grow, and develop a port. Okay. So a set of infantry, either side of my guns. They very much want to be welded to that extra firepower. Got my pikemen behind the lines. Got my dragoons on the flank. Hit the chief's bodyguard at range. But we're going to become increasingly fussed about the troops. But let's take first regiment of dragoons, colonial dragoons go charge into the garrison native bowmen because they are weak switch our our uh, cannon shot to oh there's the native warriors push around the flank so I'm, I'm open for them to charge me because we do have the pikemen behind the lines Some native troops are wavering. No, so don't commit my cavalry. That's yeah, not great. It's just non great. Uh, Not great use of my cavalry, realistically. He's gonna have to quit bayonets. Can you round shot Chief's bodyguard? You guys actually skirmish the with the bowmen.
let's charge my pikemen forward. Get my colonial dragoons out of this mess. You men. Bayonet up. Get these men to flee and go secure the Native American tribesmen. Or to make sure they definitely rout. Good, our pikemen are doing a real number on the Native American warriors. There you go, my pikemen are in on the chief's bodyguard. Chief's bodyguard is down. These men are now, for all intents and purposes, pikemen. So you guys charge the bowmen. Same with these cavalry, really. You men charge the armed You guys arm, hit the garrison bowmen. Yeah, they can do some good da good damage at range, but once they start start skirmishing, then they're a bit knackered. Tribesmen are going down. Hey, these guys actually came back. Well, they actually we well, didn't completely rout. So let's charge them in the flank with my cavalry. And there we go. Let's round shot the Native American tribesmen. Hessian line and this unit of pikes. Okay, shattered. So these men hit the Native American tribesmen hard and fast. These guys are going to charge into this unit of tribesmen. So uncivilized. Then it's charging our dragoons to cut them down. There we go. Now they're starting to fall. There we go. It looks like well, that's the end of it. Unless nope. There we go. Whew. Good stuff. So we withstood the first sally. They now have 100 men remaining. It's tempting to uh, demand their surrender, which is probably not a bad idea. <laughs> the pirates died from the new Spaniards, uh, from the new Spaniards protecting our port. Demand surrender. Surrender refused. Very well. Siege works underway. Can spend some money replenishing because you've got no there's no rush to to charge. Ready and so you guys are going to put the garrison here under siege. Try and recruit some spare men. Fleet arrived. Okay, so Morocco. United Provinces, 13 colonies, Sweden. So who's down here? The Marathas! Okay, let's go. Just take out the fifth rate. Occupy the post. Wait, did we not lose. We've not got on a treated flag. Fleet arrives. Okay, so we can't. We can take this trade post. Hop back to Europe. Let's pick up these fifths, send them both to West Africa. Got two more being recruited, that's good. Let's build one fourth rate. And let's probably look at actually what we've got to do is 
take Jethro Tull. With all speed. <laughs> Jethro Tull. Let's get this sloop over here. Back over to Europe. Let's bring our... Well, then sail around the pirates, silly. There we go. Get you back into yes. port. So, Moose Factory, we've got a new government building which we will upgrade and we'll upgrade. Actually, let's upgrade the roads first. Uh, let's. For tactically, we probably want to go for one of the schools we've got, I think. I mean, it will, there'll be a bit of a race between. How fast we can upgrade them and how fast they can get angry with us. The fifth rates we've already dealt with. The militia can take position in Portsmouth. Now yeah, we have new ministers. They're all okay. Got some good ones. But they're all at least four stars, so I can't complain too much. Still sieging down here. Where's our priest? There he is. What do you require of me? It'd probably be quicker to, set, to have run, moved him up and then moved him over by ship, but I don't think there's a, a rush. Let's hit end turn. Going off of the desk. I definitely saw a glimpse of a French army there. The Austrians are our allies, so if they want to do anything sneaky, then they will uh, suffer severe diplomatic penalties in the world around us. I could probably do with having some naval production in the Bahamas, but I don't think I'm going to get it. At least not anytime soon. Looks like it's going to be the job of Portsmouth to keep... Ooh, that's not good. Never, ever, ever like seeing um, AI factions loading stacks of troops up onto navies. It's usually never good. It's usually always uh, going after me at some point. So maybe it would be good to also build up a home fleet. Okay, the Huron are going to Sally again, and because we've got a 50-50 chance of the balance of power, we're probably going to have to fight it in person, just to make sure we don't get screwed over by auto-resolve, which most of you will probably know is a Total War party piece. If there's one thing it likes doing, it's just absolutely freaking out and going, oh, you've been smashed, and you sit there and go, well, why? Got one of our pike units is not doing well at all. I mean, I'm probably just going to speed this up quickly because right now we've just got our. Uh, let's piv pivot our men like so. Yeah, there goes the general. The native warriors are going to get shot down, as are the native bowmen. That was 50-50, everyone. No one could have called that, and it would have been foolish to try. There we go. The territory is ours. But the first thing we're going to do is knock down their government building. The Barbary states are continuing their raiding it would be nice to actually send some troops to go and secure Algiers to go and uh, prevent that base that's nearby from being from quite so easily interdicting our shipping we will send a Martin Castle out to go destroy the ship because it is only a galley and let's raid Oran to prevent 
building of another ship. Trade routes have been raided, that's okay. A test of faith, minus one to zeal when seeking converts in the Americas. Bravo. Okay, let's demolish the hunting grounds. Upgrade the trap post. Upgrade the roads. 24 turns till Churchill develops, which is the port. Let's march the Hessian line down towards John Churchill. Okay, we're getting some reasonable income out of this region now. It's starting to... Well, it's not growing. Roads are going to help. Enlightenment is going to help. Let's upgrade the Abundant Yield Trapper Post. Let's go back to Great Britain. Let's build another fourth. And let's upgrade this school. Let's recruit a general, Winston Holiday. Any further orders? It's t it is tempting to send a force to go hit Algiers and just claim it for Britain and try and make peace with the Barbary states. It certainly would be tempting. You're going to go down to occupy the port itself. Good. Might actually move this fourth rate down to Portsmouth. Got off, uh, Trappers in Rupert's Land built, Port in Rupert's Land, and Smith's in Rupert's Land, Konigsberg's got an ordnance factory, and a couple of other colony buildings in East Prussia. Good stuff. Port blockade in the Grand Bahama. Yeah, it should start to take out the pirates, really. But let's not go crazy. So these men can't leave the territory for a few turns yet. More than happy for these guys to sit here being attrited, especially as we are bringing up reinforcements. I'm going to get some new technologies in one turn. I should have been on that. Military syllabus. Well, let's not do military syllabus. Let's probably go for basic steam pump because I do have smiths in Rupert's land and I also have ironworks in England. As well as a weaver's cottage here. Actually, I have one in an iron workshop in Ireland as well. So that's three metal working buildings to one weaver's building. Military syllabus is is handy, no doubt. No ring burning. Okay. Okay, good. Let's hit end turn. Yeah, you sail away, France. We've got—I haven't got a bone to pick with you yet, Sunny Boy. We'll definitely be curious to see where the Ottomans sail that army. The Austrians might take Warsaw. Spaniards are clearing out the Barbary states. Not that I'm complaining about that. Ooh, I think the United Provinces have taken uh, Strasbourg. Strasbourg, I think. That would be quite an interesting win if we can keep the United Provinces A as allies and B three grand. Who are you enemies with? No, I've no. Your enemies with one of my allies, so it makes sense that I would deny passage. Oh, nuts. Uh, come on, auto-resolve. No. <laughs> course. This is why it's probably best if I um, build lots of fifth rates to easily, or more easily, build up my build up my fleet, or my um, military strength. So the reason why I auto-resolve that partially is because I suspect the Huron are going to sally. And that would be more interesting to fight, I think, than a fairly minor fleet engagement. Yeah, there we go. So, the advantage 
of taking out the Huron here is it then leaves us... Well, we we then have quite a good amount of exposure against uh, getting ready to fight the French. Okay, so we've got our gunner. You deploy. We've got our infantry. Which again, can't do fire by rank, so I might just stretch them out a bit more just to maximise the number of guns currently facing the enemy. These guys are in a bit of a bad position, so I'm probably not going to deploy stakes. I'm not going to deploy anything. Oh, I definitely don't know. Okay, let's group our cavalry together. On the flanks, including my general. Drop my pikes around either flank. going to be pushovers. Especially as a good chunk of my cavalry is actually yeomanry, which isn't isn't great. At least these men, well at least now I don't have to choose between bayonets and so on. Okay, my right flank is engaged. Let's charge the native warriors with our cavalry. Knock them off balance. Uh, you guys start to deal with what's about to come straight straight at you. Commit the pikes into the combat to fight the armed tribesmen. They're shattered, charge on into the native bowmen. Charge this cavalry on into the Native American warriors. They've broken in the center. Let's deploy my pikes to fight the medicine men because they're quite capable. Hit the bowmen. And they too are broken, so slaughter them to cause them to shatter. So I want them to charge straight into the muskets. Okay, they're shattered as well. My general's been killed. John Churchill has died very, very easily and caved. Charge into the back of the bowmen. It's unfortunate, really. John Churchill's quite a good general. They go the musketmen. Charge onto the next unit of musketmen. Push out my infantry, my pikes, form up. It can be a bit risky playing with your general like so, but sometimes there's not a lot you can do about it. There's that new no musketman that's died, or has been routed. Those men charge the bowmen. My musketman over here, just charge the chief's bodyguard. So these cavalry, the yeomanry and the 3rd Regiment of Horse have done great. Okay, counter charge their general's bodyguard, their general staff with my general staff, especially as it doesn't really mean anything now. Yeah, 
I don't walk around. You men jump into square. Okay, let's be lazy. Let's pull our cavalry back and just run our... run our pikes into there. It looks like the chief just wants to run around and be annoying. Stop my artillery from firing. Run you guys into square, and you guys into square also. So it looks like. Looks like we're not going to be able to actually catch up to the chief. Push those men up into the garrison bowmen. You men get back into line, get ready to shoot the medicine men. You guys are going to have a great time against those bowmen. We finally caught up to the chief's bodyguard. We, fight, we did get the kill on the chief's bodyguard. And then let's counter charge our pike straight into the medicine men. These bowmen towards the rear here have been shooed apart by our pikes. The medicine men are all, well they were upset prior to charging the line infantry. A pike should be enough to rout them. It's the early game pikes, you know you don't want to, you don't want to be snobbish. They are very useful. So it is very unfortunate I lost my general. But these things happen. It is unfortunate that it's quite a good general, but there we are. The general has died for the near total destruction of the enemy forces. More raiding from them. Pirates still being sneaky. Send our Dumbarton Castle out. We rule the waves. Okay, let's actually pull you back now. New Royal Air. George. Okay, we've got Physiocracy. Social contract, yes, for the tech research rate and the plus three per turn to town wealth. could probably do with something like that. Let's send some more fifth rate. Actually, send some fifth rates to the East Indies. So that's two fourths, then build two more fifths. Fleet arrives. This is a sloop with one of our agents aboard. Do you want to get him safely deployed to Oxford? Good stuff. Port blockade in the Grand, Bah Grand the, in the Grand Bahamas. That's understandable. Another fleet arrives. Turf the Marathas off of their stolen pitch. Eh, no. Let us leave it. We might even be able to get the one next to it. Provide some good income. Heroic death. John Churchill. Hey, we actually captured the whole region. Neat. Let's replenish the troops and let's get a new general. Henry Dayton. Okay, let's build this gold mine and let's build tier one roads. Understandably, the population here are very unhappy, so let's exempt them from tax just for a while. Bring up our priest. Let's build a magistrate here in the Northwest Territories. I'm surprised I don't have any objectives to bring 13 colonies into my uh, into my employ. So the Cherokee. Cherokee, 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 Cherokee. 
Now I'll be nine provinces in the Iroquois. Okay, that's unfortunate. But we're friendly. We're all friends. As long as they don't attack my friends, the 13 colonies. Could then probably knock out the pirates. Probably knock out the Inuit. Because they're only... They've not yet formed an annoying um, alliance. So these men, they'll regroup in Moose Factory and sail up and hit um, Agvatuk. Knock them out quickly. You're going to build up some men and probably sail north to join them while then, before heading south, to go take out the pirates. The Huron have been destroyed. Yep, there goes the Huron. Cool. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Great Britain. Cheers, everyone.